Good morning, Facebook friends. I'm Dr. Mike Adkison, and we're here today at Brookfield Zoo. And today we thought we would give you a behind the scenes look at some of the husbandry and uh, trained behaviors that some of our animals are able to do. One of the things that from the veterinary perspective always makes me really happy is when we can get an animal trained to the point of being able to voluntarily participate in some of their own medical care. And that's what we kind of wanted to show to you today. We've got Cayenne, one of our servals here with us. And uh, one of the incredible things that we're able to do with some of our animals is to train them to allow voluntary injections. And that's for vaccinations or any medications that they may need. And that's really based on the incredibly close relationship that our animals have with their care staff. And that level of trust that they have within the people that take care of them on a daily basis allows the development of some of these behaviors. With Cayenne, we're actually able to uh, give him his injections on an annual basis for all of his uh, routine vaccinations. So just like a domestic cat in your house might uh, go see the vet once a year for some of their shots and normal vaccines, our animals here at the zoo have the same thing happen. So what uh, our incredible care staff has been able to do with Cayenne is to train him to actually take these injections voluntarily. So he knows a number of different behaviors that all help us to make sure that he stays in the best health possible. When it comes to the injections themselves, the way that the care staff works up to these behaviors is that they'll desensitize him just to my presence as the first step um, so that he doesn't react when there's a new person in the area. And you can see I'm standing right here next to him and he's very much uh, at ease and calm with what's going on. Then the next thing they would do is work towards uh, building up that behavior by starting with just uh, being touched in the area that we wanna uh, give that injection, which in his case is gonna be kind of his lower back leg there. And then the next thing they'll do is desensitize that to just kind of being poked. You can see how uh, she just kind of pushed in a little bit with her finger just to get him used to being touched in that area and kind of have a little poke. And then they'll approximate it with uh, the next step, which Maggie has here, which is just a curved tip syringe. So nothing uh, really sharp there, but just a little Good. bit more of a poke. detailed poke Good. so that he gets used to that. And once that step's completed, then they'll work their way up to a dull needle. So this is an actual needle, um, but the tip's been blunted on it so that it's not actually sharp enough Good. to uh, oh. penetrate his skin. And she's just going to touch him with oh. that a few times to oh. get him used to kind of being touched there. <laughs> You can see this is all a voluntary participation on Cayenne's part. So if at any time he's uncomfortable with what's going on or doesn't like it, he's got the option to leave the situation. So you can see there that once that step's completed, then we're going to move up to an actual um, injection. And that's what I've actually got here with me right now. And this injection is just uh, saline. So this is not an actual vaccine or anything like that, but it's just a saline solution. So it doesn't sting. It doesn't burn anything like that. And we'll just get him used to having that routine injection given. Uh, we don't do this often, so this is not something that happens every day by any means, but this is just something that we work towards getting him comfortable with so that when we get to the point of actually needing to give a vaccine, he's comfortable with having that injection done and poked in. So, step so I'm gonna come up here now, and I'm gonna stop talking for a minute just so I don't distract him, and we'll let you just see this behavior as it takes place. So you can see that he did an absolutely perfect job there. He got kind of a jackpot reward there in terms of some meat and a syringe that we were able to push out to him and then some other jackpot rewards here so that the behavior was exactly what we wanted and he knows that that was uh, what we were looking for and that he did a great job. Um, there's a number of other procedures that he's kind of trained to participate with. So these are gonna be things like opening his mouth, letting people touch his feet, look at his nails, all kinds of things just to make sure that there's no issues or concerns or if there is a problem that develops it allows me as the veterinarian to to be able to get close to him and to be able to look at different parts of his body in a safe manner okay. one of the things that we're really working towards right now is really trying to build up these injection behaviors in as many of our animals as possible and that's in anticipation that we will soon have a covid vaccine available for animals that we'll be able to give some of the animals that are known to be susceptible species to that. So there have been uh, reports at this point of positive cases in a, in a number of different non-domestic animals. So we really wanna make sure that we're keeping our collection safe. Um, that's part of the reason that even when we're alone with an animal, we're still wearing masks when we're up close to them because we don't wanna run the risk of transferring a potential situation to one of our animals. 
as these vaccines become available, the more animals that we've got that are voluntarily able to take these vaccines, the better. Um, we can also use it with some of our large animals, such as our big cats or our, our apes and some of our primates to allow injection of an anesthetic drug so that we're able to very safely put an animal under anesthesia um, in a way that's not stressful to them. So it really allows us to provide the best welfare possible for our animals here at the zoo. Aside from the animals who get voluntary injections, do other animals get vaccinations? They do. So um, for the animals that we're not able to train that behavior with voluntarily, we've got a couple different mechanisms that we'll utilize. Some of our animals, like uh, some of our hoofstock, we can move them into areas where we're able to safely just restrain the animal in kind of a shoot situation um, to be able to give the injection the same way that we would work with a, a cow or a horse potentially in a domestic animal setting. And then for some of our animals, we do still use blow darts with those animals, which is the way for us to remotely administer a vaccine from a safe distance. Um, and it really, it's uh, from the animal's point of view, it's not a whole lot different than just having that injection given. They just are not expecting where it comes from at the time that it happens. Uh, can you remind us what type of cat this is? So this is one of our servals. This is Cayenne. And what we're doing right now is we're just working towards a voluntary injection behavior with him. And we, just gave that injection a minute ago and he did absolutely wonderful with it. And that's really possible because of the incredibly close relationship these animals have with their care staff here at the zoo. And um, that they're able to work with these guys in very close proximity. Cayenne is one of our ambassador animals here at the zoo. Um, and so you may come out here to the zoo and see some of our different animals in our wild encounters area out in a situation like this. And that's really to allow our guests to get up close to them to learn about them and really be able to appreciate what we need to do from a conservation standpoint to help these animals in the wild. <laughs> so Cayenne is sitting there so nicely. Um, Nicolette, what, what types of things are you doing with him to, to get him to stay? Um, so he's very comfortable being out here in this room. He's comfortable with this stump. Uh, this is uh, something that we use to kind of let him sit. Oh, he's blepping. That's cute. Um, <laughs> well, of course, while I was looking, looking away. I had to point that out. Um, so anywhere we take this stump, really, he is comfortable. He knows kind of that's a station, wherever he is. He knows he's going to be safe there. Nobody's going to be coming up in his personal space. Um, and one of the reasons I walked away with Kyan first is instead of somebody that he's not used to coming up very closely, he gets to make that choice to come towards the new person. Mm -hmm. And that gives the animals, you know, choice that they need to be comfortable. That's but, great. Yeah. He's such a good boy. And we're very close. There's a lot of trust here. We've been taking care of him since he was about three weeks old. Um, he came from Tatvas Zoo in Idaho, uh, him and his brother Churchill. So they just turned seven in April. So we've been working with them a very long time. Um, he trusts Maggie and I pretty much completely <laughs> to do <laughs> all of these behaviors. And that's really what allows us to get uh, further with something like voluntary injection training. Okay. And uh, Dr. Mike, how often do you, um, how often do you administer vaccines to animals? It really depends on the animal species. So a lot of our animals, like uh, our servals here, have a domestic animal counterpart. So we've got really good uh, uh, awareness of what works best based on domestic cat medicine. So we're able to basically just take the same vaccine schedule that we would use with a domestic cat and apply it to our non-domestic animals here at the zoo, like our servals and even our lions and tigers and our bigger cats. Um, for some of our other animals, it's a little bit more difficult to, to know what the ideal vaccine schedule is, um, but we try and base that off the domestic animals as best we can. Obviously, some of our animals here at the zoo, like our sloths, for instance, don't have a domestic animal counterpart, but we're still able to take that foundational medicine that we know really well from our domestic animals and apply it to our non-domestic animals here at the zoo. Okay. So how often do you practice the vaccination training? So the wonderful thing about this is because his trust is so strong with the people that take care of him on a daily basis, that it doesn't have to be me here. It can really just be any new person that can help to sort of uh, bridge that behavior as it's being developed and to just get him comfortable with a stranger coming up next to him and being close. Um, we certainly will have our vets or our vet techs spend time with an animal um, in a practice type of session if it's helpful, if we feel like the animal needs to kind of have 
the awareness of one of us around. Um, some of our animals, like our gorillas, are obviously very more keyed in on me as a person, and when <laughs> I show up, they may react very differently than when a different keeper um, or different care staff uh, person shows up. But um, for the most part, um, when the behaviors are really well established, any of our vets or any of our veterinary technicians can swap into that role. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, getting a little uh, look behind the scenes here today and um, seeing what we're able to do here with our servals as far as medical behavior training. Um, we are open here again at the zoo and we hope that you'll come out and join us here soon. And when you do, be sure to swing by our Wild Encounters area and uh, um, we hope to see you soon.